Hello everyone, welcome back to another hard surface modeling tutorial. I know this is a long one to watch, but I am sure that you are gonna learn something new you don't know. I even myself learned a lot of things while working on this tutorial alone. So basically we are gonna dive deep into CG Mesher workflow in Cinema 4D and this is what we are gonna get. Let me show you the wireframes, as you can see, a very good result. Nearly a flawless topology. I highly suggest you to watch the helmet parts at least to get an idea about the workflow. Also, before ending the tutorial, I'm gonna show you a very fast way to add textures, labels, or anything on any object without UV unwrapping them. Anyway, enough talking. Now let's get into modeling. Alright, let's start with the image plane. As usual, I'm gonna click on the middle mouse, then go to the front view, hit Shift and V, go to back and import the image plane we are gonna be using. This one, I will try to center it like that, maybe a little bit transparency. Now I'm gonna copy that path, Ctrl C, then go to the front view and paste that path. Oops, sorry, paste that pet over. Now let's bring our first object and it's gonna be a sphere. I'm gonna make it slightly larger. Then I'm gonna change its type to hexadron so that we are gonna get a much better topology. After that, I'm gonna crank the segments up like 128. And that's gonna be it. Now I will make it editable so that I can go into points mode and grab brush tool. I'm gonna make my brush slightly larger and move these points just like that. Okay, now I will switch to the front view, hit T on the keyboard. And I'm gonna scale the sphere on the X. Perfect. Now I'm gonna duplicate this one, just drag this off and hide the first one. I am saving this one because as you can see the shape is looking perfectly smooth, which I can use later for projection, maybe for some other stuff. So I'm gonna save that just Duplicate it and hide it. Now, obviously, we need to cut this object, and I'm gonna do that with Spline Pen tool. Make sure that you are in model mode, not in other components mode like these ones. Make sure that you are in model mode, then select Spline Pen tool, and let's try to mesh the shape as much as possible. That's gonna be it. Now we can select individual points and move them around to get a better shape. But overall, this is looking perfect. Now I'm gonna select all the points, Control A, and move them over here. Then, while the spline object is selected, hold down Alt and select Extrude tool. I'm gonna Play with the offset mode so it goes all the way through the object. Now I'm gonna select my sphere, hold down Alt, select Pool, and put the new extrude under that sphere. Perfect. To see it better, I'm gonna hit NNV on the keyboard to see the wireframes. Now, uh, as you can see, we got a really good cut, clean cut, but it's gonna be really hard to delete the unwanted polygons. So for that reason, just to make it a little easier, I'm gonna put this extrude under a cloth surface. We don't want any subdivisions, we just want some thickness. Something like that should be enough. Now we can go back to bool and make it editable. Hit C on the keyboard. We can get rid of that uh, group. Then we can select the sphere. I will be in polygon mode. 
select move tool and double click on that polygon island. Now we can easily delete this. Perfect. We got the basic shape, but we have more to add, for example, these little details. So let's get into them first. Let's try to do that shape. Again, I'm going to use spline pen tool, but I cannot see it over here because I should be in model mode. Select that one. I will try to model this as simple as possible, like that one. That is another way to model these kind of spline shapes. Then you can, for example, use the chamfer tool to chamfer these points out like that. Or another option is the interpolations, like I can select solve interpolation, scale it maybe. Same here, solve interpolation. Maybe another point over here. All right, this is looking okay. Now, as I did before, I will select all the points and move them over here so you can see, the, see them all. And move down alt, extrude, change to offset so that it goes through the whole shape. Now, as I did before, I'm going to grab my object, Sapir object. Hold down Alt and select Pool. By the way, I can delete that. Uh, sorry, that's null, and maybe we can put it over the top. Now I'm gonna put extruder extrude under the sphere, and that's gonna be it for that part. Now we have that triangular shape over here. Let's go to the front view and let's do the same thing. Basically, grab polygon. Uh, sorry, spline pen tool and try to model it as simple as possible now we can select the points and play with them i'm gonna chamfer this right click chamfer same here maybe slightly larger and move them over here alt down alt extrude change to offset this already goes through so it will be enough i will just move this up and i'm gonna use this same bool i just need to group that extrude so that i can put an object inside that null now because this is gonna act like a single one single object Another thing is the symmetry. Obviously, we are going to need that detail on the left side. So let's find that extrude object. Yes, this one. First, I will put a uh, bring a null into the scene, which will be right in the center of the world. Then I'm going to put this one under my rule group. Maybe we can rename that to subtraction. Now I'm going to put that extrude under that null. Then I will put that null under a symmetry. Right. So the reason that I brought that null in so that I can use these uh, nulls coordinates as a reference for the symmetry. Now I'm gonna grab that extrusion and move it just a bit. I checked image planes and they have some perspective shift so. The objects will not uh, perfectly fit in, so I will kind of improvise a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little up, maybe a little larger. So I'm gonna scale that up. All right, that looks fine. Now we have something the back but i'm gonna do that later because there is another detail that i want to work on and it is this one right in the middle i don't know if you can see it yes it is more obvious over here 
So let's first get that. Before doing that, I'm gonna make that pool editable. Just hit C on the keyboard and delete that null. We don't need it anymore. Now, I'm gonna bring in a cube. Scale that. It should be right in the middle. Yeah, something like that. I will make it editable and move that polygon over here. Then I'm gonna add these loop cuts. Then actually, you know what? First, I will put this one into a boolean like that so I can see the result. Uh, I want to make the bottom part of the cube slightly larger so that I can get a different shape. Maybe another one over here and bring this down. Scale them on the X. Yeah, exactly. This is what I am looking for. Maybe we can select this polygon only and scale it on the X. Actually, first I'm gonna move that one over here. Now I'm gonna scale this. Select these points only, move this down. All right, that should be enough. Now I'm gonna make two versions of that pool because I will need the other part as well. I mean, if I change my uh, boolean type, to, we are gonna see that uh, there is also that part which uh, I will be using. So I will set this back to A, subtract B, then duplicate this, just drag this off, hide it for the moment, go back to this one, select create single object and make it editable. Now I'm gonna hide this one and unhide the old one. This time I will change the boolean type and create single object and make it editable. Unhide this one and here we go. We have two separate objects. Now in this object, basically I want to extrude it Right click, select extrude. Before extruding, select all the poly polygons, hit Ctrl A, and extrude these out like that, maybe. Then I'm gonna scale this in on the x axis. Another thing, we don't need this polygons right over here to select that i'm going to use funk break selection un and it is right over here this tool selects polygons based on their angles I and mean, angles of the edges if there is a hard edge it's gonna make a selection based on that all right everything is looking great now i want to combine these two right click connect objects and delete but it's not going to be enough because we need to connect these points as well right now they are not connected to do that it is really easy just select all the points right click and select optimize tool which merges the points based on their position if they are too close to each other they are going to be welded now let's get the other details such as this one on the back I will just put the cylinder scale that down yeah like that we are gonna need more than 16 like I don't know 48 it is not important we are gonna have the same shape on the other side so I will do the same thing just bring a null in and put that cylinder under that null and put that null under uh, symmetry that's all I will bring another two
I want to make this object as complex as possible so we can see the capabilities of Ziri Mesher. Over here, then another one, hold down control, drag this off. I'm gonna put this one under that now. Now, so like the helmet base objects and hold down out the bool and put the symmetry under that. Perfect. Maybe let me see which one is that. I can select that one, make it editable, grab that edge, and change the axis to world. And I'm gonna width just a little bit. Same for that cube as well. Perfect. I think it's time to make this bool editable. Hit C on the keyboard, then just delete this now. Then we are ready to go. Let's delete that now. I'm gonna hold down Alt and select Remesh. Alright, so right off the bat, that gave a perfect, nearly perfect result. Of course, when we zoom into little details, we are starting to lose some of the shape, but we're gonna play around with mesh density. Let's bring that up to, let's say, 150. All right, not bad. Also, this is a symmetrical object on the X, so I can enable that. I don't want any adaptiveness so that I will get a uniform topology all around the shape. Now I will make the remesh editable and put this one under another remesh. But this time uh, I'm gonna try to bring the mesh density down. First let's enable symmetric X, no adaptiveness and let's try 50 percent all right the shape is still holding up except over here so let's try 75 oh, sorry should be in mesh density let's try 75 all right not bad i'm gonna make this one editable let's see and i'm gonna try one more time let's edit zero measure and set this to 75 symmetric X and no adaptiveness. Yeah, I believe we reached the limit. Let's delete that image. I want to put a smoothing deformer. Not that much, maybe let's say 30%. Nice. I will apply that to the former connect object set. Delete and here we go. Before proceeding further, I'm gonna give another chance to Z the measure because I find this too much. I mean the density of the mesh. So I believe we can go lower than that. We are gonna lose some of the details such as over here, but I think it works that also we can always bring this back when we are done with zero measure so let's select this one hold on out at remesh symmetric x no adaptiveness and i will go for 50 percent maybe 40 and let's try 45 maybe yeah exactly if you check out this spot and if i set this back to 40 you're gonna see that we are not getting a good result especially over here but 45 is looking really good. Also, the other parts are looking okay, no problem at all. Which means that I can make this one editable. Let's see. Let's try one more time. You know what? To compare them, I'm gonna make a duplicate of this one and make this editable and put another remesh. Symmetric X, no adaptiveness. And let's go for. 50 
this is to log 55, 60. Now let's make this one editable. And let's try to fix some parts such as over here. This is a symmetrical object, so I should enable symmetry half. Make sure that the X is on. Now I'm gonna slide that point up slightly. Then select these two edges. Right click, select stitch and save tool, hold on shift and connect these edges. That's gonna be it. Now let's compare this high and low poly. This is the old one. And this is the no this is the low poly one. Yeah. I think it totally worth the effort we made. Okay, we can save that one just in case. Now let's give some thickness to that object. I'm gonna select them all. Let's turn off symmetry half. Right click, select extrude and enable caps. Extrude this. Then the normals are not looking that good. I will select the foam tank and lower that angle. Nice. Now I will re enable symmetry half because I am going to add some loop cuts. For example, over here. Then going to polygon mode, make a loop selection and scale this in. Yeah, something like that. Then something similar over here loop cuts then loop selection then scale is in same here loop selection scale is in all right now these ones for these ones let's select these with loop selection then I'm gonna get bevel tool and bevel these out like that. I don't want these triangles, so I will change my military to uniform. Maybe we can add more details by selecting this loop selection and bevel these as well, something like that. Now I'm gonna start to add sporting edges. Right click, loop cuts, let's start from here, add these ones, then here, here and here. Then uh, let me turn off that work plane, here and here, here, here and here. These ones, and that's gonna be it. Let's check the other side. Yeah, the symmetry hub did a good job. Everything is looking clear. Now it's time to see the results. Let's put the subdivision surface over the top. Change the view. And here we go. Perfect. I am really happy with the result. As you can see, the topology is nearly flawless. perfect result considering the time we spent on such a complex object now let's work on the face mask let's hide it we don't need that for the moment and I will be in model mode to get spline pen tool as usual I will try to model this as simple as possible I'm gonna run these points out later. I just want the basic shape. Now, I'm gonna unhide this one back and select all the points and move them over here. You cannot do that. I cannot do that because symmetry help is enabled. So I turn this off and move these ones over here. So this is 2D, so we need to make it 3D. To do that, I will go into points mode, select that point, hold on control, just like we do with polygons, 
or edges, I will hold down control and move this point over here. This is going to be a symmetrical object, so while this point is selected, I'm going to set its position to 0 on X. Same here, but watch out. I'm going to hold down control and try to extrude, but instead of the new point, the existing point is trying to move. So first, before, the, before extruding, I need to right click and select so that I can extrude that point. I need to set this one to zero and here we go. Now we need to make this a render. First, I will select this, right click, and I'm going to select soft interpolation. This isn't looking that great, but we have one more step to make this one much better. And for this one, I'm gonna unhide the first sphere we made, if you remember. So I will select all the points of the spline, right click, and I'm gonna select project. And I'm gonna change its mode to spherical and hit apply. That's all. We can hide this sphere back. I'm gonna select the spline. Going to points mode, and I will move some of these. I'm gonna rotate this slightly. Yeah, I am happy with this one. Let's unhide the helmet. I'm just gonna select these points and move them on the X so to give it a more space. It's time to round these points out, select them all, right click and select soft interpolation. Check this out one more time. I can scale this. I believe I need to move this one over here. Maybe these points as well. Let me hide that helmet. All right, now the other side. Unfortunately, the symmetry tool is not working very well with the splines. So instead, using that generator symmetry, I'm gonna make a duplicate of this one. Go to coordinates and reverse the X size. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna type in minus one. Now I will combine this, right click, connect objects and delete. Now we need to enable close spline option. So this is gonna act like a single one. We are getting that edge, that spline in the middle because these ones are not connected. As you can see, we have two points. So right click and select left. That's gonna be it. Of course, these are gonna be really sharp. So I should select. Okay, as you can see, it is looking very good. Let's unhide the helmet. Okay. Maybe we can give a little bit more space. The other one, it's going to be really easy. I will just select the first line and I am going to scale that in. First, let's duplicate this and scale in. Actually, uh, I should not scale that because they have the same size, I believe. Yeah, exactly. So instead of scaling, I will just move these ones over here, then get rid of unnecessary points such as this one. Then I can move it over here. This point can go, can move this up. I can put these ones over here and this one right here. I'm gonna rotate this slightly.
in 2D view, it's looking great now. Let's check the 3D view as well. No, I want to check the top view. Yes, this one is supposed to be set to soft interpolation. I'm gonna scale this then. Select the point, then enable symmetry hub. Scale this down. Okay, this should be more than enough. Perfect. Now, let's say that you want more definition on these edges, uh, sorry, points. You may say that this soft interpolation may look too soft. In such cases, you can select them and set them to hard interpolation. Put them into position first. Then select them all. Right click and you can uh, use chamfer. This is gonna give you more definition. Now the other parts, let's enable symmetry for this time because I'm gonna snap the new spline onto these existing ones. So click on here, enable snap and enable especially the spline one. Now let's go into model mode, grab spline pen tool. I will have both 3D view and 3D view so I can see where I am putting these new points so this one is supposed to be over here and goes down over here after that point uh, there is nothing that i can snap on so click on here and here i'm gonna move this one actually i'm not gonna move first i will change its points order it's gonna turn white now we can extrude it set its position position to zero now i can set this to soft let's check the top view so this is supposed to be somewhere around here not sure but let's say that over here Take the right view. Let's re enable snap and put this back into position. That seems okay. I'm gonna make a duplicate, change the size of that to minus one on the x axis, Let's combine them, connect objects, and delete. Which means that we need to weld these points. Then I will select soft interpolation. Check the top view for the roughness of that point. I'm gonna chamfer this point. Perfect. Now the other ones. This one is really easy. Make sure that you don't select anything. Otherwise, if you select, for example, select this one and select grab spline pen tool, it's gonna add the new spline onto this existing spline. So just click off and create a new one. Now I'm going to create a new one, so click off, then go into model mode, select spline, pen tool, and click on these two splines, and hit E to exit the spline pen tool. I'm going to select these points and set their both position and size to 0 on X, so they are going to be right in the middle. Another one, click off, model mode, spline pen tool, yes, it is right over here 
select the points, make sure that the points are right on zero. Yes. Then let's see. All right, we are gonna have on the sides. So click off model mod spline pen tool. And that's gonna be it. It looks like there should be somewhere around here. Nice, then another one. And here we go. I'm gonna select the splines that should be on the other side as well. Group them, Alt and G, Alt and Symmetry. I'm gonna make it editable because some of them are not right in the position, for example, this one. So going to points mode and move these points until they are snapped on the spline. Let's check these splines out. I see that that point should be right on here and should be sharper like that. Other than that, maybe we can turn off symmetry help and snap these points. Check the other ones. This one, for example. Okay, I think we are looking good to add Civip nerves. So first let's turn off snap and for example we can combine these two splines because they have no connections. Also their close spline option is on. So I'm gonna right click and say connect objects and delete. Let's move this one over here. Hold down Alt and select sweep. Uh, sorry. First, I should add a circle, scale this down, now hold down Alt and add the sweep, then put the spline under the circle. Select back the circle, scale that, that down to something like that. Now I want to check the topology, hit NNB on the keyboard. Let's select this one and change its inter intermediate points to uniform as the name says. This is going to give us a more uniform shape all around the object. I can bring this down. Actually, first I will go to the circle and change its number to 1. This is the lowest we can go. Go back to the spline and increase that up. I want basically every polygon to be as square as possible. Now I will just duplicate the existing sweep, drag this off, delete the spline and replace it with the other one. I'm gonna change its intermediate points to uniform and make something similar like I don't know 12 maybe. In this strip though, we are going to do something different. I'm going to select that circle, hit T on the keyboard to get the scale tool and I'm going to scale that circle down so that this sweep will fit into the, the other sweep. This is going to be really important, otherwise we are going to get these weird shapes all over the place. So this new sweep should be right into that, into the other sweep, if that makes sense. I'm gonna show you an example. So let's scale this down. Make sure that everything is looking okay. For example, 
here might create a problem. So select the spline going to points mode and select the point. But other than that, everything is looking very good. Now we have a problem. If you look at closely inside of that, the first sweep, we're gonna see polygons inside of it, which is not acceptable if we're gonna work in South Asia surface workflow. So for that reason, I will select the first sweep, put it into a bool, then put the other one under it. I will change its type to union. Now this is gonna delete all the polygons inside. Yes, the other splines, let's select them. Right click, connect objects and delete. Delete that empty null. For this one, let me add these points with blank card tool so that I can move them like that and give them more roundness with soft interpolish. Maybe we can scale this up. Okay. Now I'm gonna find the thinner pipe. Control C, Control V, delete the spline and replace it with the new one. Maybe this one needs more scaling. Then we can select the spline, points of the spline. All right, everything is looking great, except this part. Maybe we are gonna need more scaling. Let's change this to uniform, as I as we did before on the other ones. Now we are gonna have the same problem. These are gonna intersect heavily, so to fix that. We are going to need another boolean, but easy, just select the first one, put it under another one, Let's change its boolean type to union, then put this one under that one. This is going to get rid of these inside polygons. Now everything is ready to be remeshed, so select the bool and hold down alt and select remesh. Right off the bat, it is not a bad result, but we have a bunch of artifacts over here, especially these connected parts. This is happening because booleans are not set to create single object mode. So we should enable these, select both of them. If you have any more than that, select them as well and enable create single object. That should fix as much as possible. It looks like that amount, that mesh density is not well enough to get a good result. So let's try, for example, 200. No adaptiveness. Okay, it is getting better. Maybe we can try fading mode as well. Sometimes it gives a more definition, especially on, on connections. Some parts are not looking good, but I have a good solution for them. First, let's make this one editable. Let's see. I will go into model mode, hold down shift and select smoothing reformer. Of course, it's going to be too much. So something like 20 will be okay. Let's make it 50. I'm gonna apply that deformer, right click on the object and select connect objects and delete. Now I will go into polygon mode, select all the polygons and normal transform, normal move. So I'm gonna push these polygons out.
these are supposed to be thicker than that, so I'm gonna scale these out a bit. Normal move tool. Okay, not bad. I mean, as you saw, this is an expensive way to model these kind of things, especially these connections, but you know, this is gonna give you a more professional look. Some parts of that object is not looking that great, I know, but you know, they also adding some imperfections to the surface. I believe these are gonna look really good with a metal shader. Now let's do something for the inside part of the helmet. So you know, we save that just in case the first sphere and I'm gonna use it one more time. So it is really important to keep these kind of shapes. They are really handy. So that much of size is looking okay. Maybe we can saw it. Same process I will be following. Spline pen tool, right view. So I will start from here. And maybe, I don't know, something like that. Maybe can chamfer these points out like that. Select all them all, move them over here. Put it under next root generator. Then I'm gonna put this one into a cloth surface. No subdivisions, divisions, but thickness, please. Then let's move this up and put it under a pool and put the cloths under that. Now it is easy. Select the pool, make it editable, delete that group, and in polygon mode. Just double click on that polygon island and delete it. The rest is the rest is pretty straightforward. Yes. Zero measure and that's gonna be it. That might be too much though. Let's try 50. Get back maybe. Okay, it looks like 50 is looking okay. Maybe we can enable symmetric X. No adaptiveness. All right, make it editable. Unite everything, select them all, all the polygons. Maybe we can scale this in with normal move tool. Then extra tool. Create caps option should be on and extrude these in. Can add more details, such as I can select these ones, grab slide tool, hold on control, and select them. Then we can select these polygons, extrude these out. But this time I will turn off caps option. Then maybe we can use these ones to add more details. If I can push these out with normal move tool. Then maybe we can scale these normals with normal scale tool. Yeah, something like that. Now let's add some supporting edges. And put this one under our helmet group. Let's rename that to helmets. Move it over here, delete that now. Alright, looking great. Now I'm gonna show you a very good way to add stickers, logos, or any kind of texture uh, onto any surface without UV unwrapping them. But first, let's create a material. I can use that, I believe. Just I need to be an NQ to see it in the viewport. Let's go to color. I'm gonna select that texture now. 
and this is already applied to that mesh. I'm gonna rename it to helmet. So select the material tag and change its projection to flat. Go into texture mode, click on this one and hit T. Just like you scale your objects, you can also scale the textures and materials. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees. And as you can see, the expect ratio of the texture is not right. So I will just scale the Y only. Then select the material tag one more time and turn off time option. Let's move it somewhere around here maybe and scale it up. Now I will duplicate that material. But this time I'm gonna copy that color from the texture click on over here then i'm gonna get rid of that texture we used on that material now i'm gonna apply this material on this object but it should be behind the material with the texture on it now they're gonna act like a single material now we can move this one maybe make it larger and we can rotate it. It looks, as you can see, perfect. Or even we can go higher than that. Of course, the texture resolution will drop down because it is very low. We can go to the Attributes of the material, go to viewport and set it to, let's say, 2K. Speaking of materials, let's make something different for the other ones. This one, something darker. I'm gonna assign this to, not this one, but this one. Okay, another one. Let's make this one metallic. Less roughness, like five, maybe. As a last touch, maybe we can select the helmet. Let's turn off solo. I'm gonna make some selections with loop selection, hold down shift and add these polygons to your selection. Then I'm gonna apply that black material on these selected polygons. Okay, I think this is gonna be more than enough. It's time to end the tutorial. If you have any questions, just ask them in the comments. I read them all. I hope you learned something new. I am really happy about the results. I even myself learned a lot of things while preparing this tutorial. So I'm gonna see you in the next tutorials. Bye.